when we look at the Linux world, it looks very GNOME. Yes, there are tons of smaller distro projects and flavors and spins, but those flagship distros, they are almost always GNOME. RHEL is GNOME. All the RHEL clones are GNOME. Ubuntu is GNOME. Fedora is GNOME. SUSE is GNOME. And these are some absolutely major distros on both the corporate space and the desktop space. Now, some might say this is some IBM conspiracy to... Insert IBM conspiracy here. But it's not like it's always been like this. Back in URL 7 days and prior, KDE was a first-party supported option, then it got deprecated, then it got removed. This was around the same time the same thing happened over on the SUSE side as well. Now, SUSE is not OpenSUSE. They are completely different projects. OpenSUSE still supports KDE and probably always will. As for Fedora and KDE, obviously there is the Fedora KDE spin and Kubuntu respectively, and whilst these have been around for a really long time and are really popular, they've never been the flagship of the project. Like, Ubuntu... You've never thought of as a KDE distro. It's a GNOME distro. It's a Unity distro. And there happens to be a version of it that supports KDE. But that's not the one that Canonical is promoting. So with that being said, people are obviously going to ask the question. Why do so few distributions ship with KDE Plasma by default? Why do none of the major distros have KDE Plasma as default? Why isn't KDE default on more Linux distros. Why do no distros flagship KDE? I could spend an entire video just reading out people asking why more distros don't have KDE without even answering the question. That is how many people have wanted to know over the years because it doesn't seem like there's any like logical reason for it, at least from the outside. You see, okay, it's GNOME, okay, it's KDE. They're both clearly good desktops. You might have your opinions on one over the other, but clearly they're both really good nowadays, so why not just have them both, or why isn't there more of a clear mix? Now, I think the best way to answer this question isn't just speculating on things that I don't understand. The best way to answer it is seeing the answer from someone who actually runs a KDE distro. A bit over a year ago, Conan Kudo made this reply over on Reddit. Now, you may also know him as Neil Gumper. Now, how you know Neil, that's a really long story. Neil gets himself involved in many things. Many things Fedora, many things KDE, many things OpenSUSE, many things in every single part of the Linux space. The part that is relevant here is he's involved in running the Fedora KDE spin. You may recall him from the discussion about Fedora KDE dropping Xorg. He was the guy running that discussion. As Neil describes it, there are two major problems with KDE Plasma today. Firstly, the life cycle. KDE Plasma does not have a homogenous release cadence and life cycle like GNOME does. KDE Framework are released monthly. KDE Gear and KDE Plasma are released every four months, but at different times. There's basically no harmony across these critical parts of the KDE Plasma stack. This is not at all an issue if you're something like Manjaro, because you just release it when it's ready. This isn't a problem for Arch, this isn't a problem for Tumbleweed, because these are rolling releases. You don't have a release window that you need to hit. When the package is available, you just ship the package and it's totally fine. But most distros aren't like this. Most distros are like Ubuntu, they're like Fedora. They have a release schedule, they have a feature freeze, they have a release date where a new version comes out, where they want to make sure that everything is ready for the new version. And having a unified release date where all of their packages are going to be ready for their desktop makes things way, way easier. For comparison, everything for GNOME is released together, and GNOME releases every six months. This consistency also makes it easier for enterprise Linux distributions, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, SUSE Linux Enterprise, to consider upgrading GNOME on a regular basis. SUSE Linux Enterprise does it every two years, for example. But this isn't just an enterprise Linux thing. This also applies to distros like Ubuntu. Why do you think Ubuntu still releases in April and October? 
why not March and September? Why not May and November? Like, this will still give you the six-month gap and will work perfectly fine. Well, a big part of the reason is GNOME. Let's have a look at the GNOME 46 release, GNOME 45, and GNOME 44, and you'll notice a very quick pattern. So the string freeze is the latest freeze, February 24th, GNOME 45, the release was on September 20th, okay? GNOME 44, the release was on March 22nd. This puts it in perfect line with the Ubuntu releases, so they know that GNOME is going to be ready before Ubuntu needs to ship. They can make sure they get a new version of GNOME on every new release of Ubuntu by making these numbers actually line up. Now that release window for any project is going to be stressful, but especially so when you're dealing with the distro where you have all of these different parties involved with all of their different software, that don't have consistent releases. So if there is just one part of your system, in this case, one of the biggest parts where you can say, I don't need to worry about it. I know it is going to be ready. That takes off a lot of stress. Stress you can move to something which you have no idea about. And it's not just an Ubuntu thing. Fedora is the exact same way. While it says, oh, Fedora 40, to be determined, is it going to be GNOME 46? It's going to be GNOME 46. Is going to be GNOME 46 because that's how the release window has been set up to work. This is also compounded by the mess that is KDE Plasma LTS. KDE Plasma LTS only covers KDE Plasma. Now, that logically makes sense based on the name, but that's not the only component of the desktop. The frameworks and gears are not included. This is a nightmare to collect and release. Actually, Fedora doesn't even ship Plasma LTS for RHEL slash CentOS users anymore because it's just not viable for a long-term experience. We upgrade KDE Plasma for RHEL slash CentOS users regularly now. Side note, KDE Framework are those additional libraries used to build a KDE application instead of just a QT application. And KDE Gear, you may know better as KDE Applications. This is where things like Kate, Ocular, Arc, console, all of those standard KDE applications actually live. When he says KDE Plasma LTS is just KDE Plasma, he means it is just the desktop component, nothing else. Honestly, that felt like a lot more than one reason, but here is the second, the sprawl. The KDE ecosystem is more than double the size of GNOME. A fully featured KDE Plasma setup is almost 6 hundred components. Now you can do like a minimal install and just install the desktop, but on these systems you're going to have everything available. As somebody who works to offer KDE Plasma for Fedora, I can say it's really hard. The size of the dependency chain for KDE Plasma blew up with the transition from KDE SC4 to KDE Plasma 5, and keeping everything working is a challenge. Back in the KDE 4 days, this is KDE Software Compilation 4. Rather than having this clear separation between Gears, Framework, and Plasma, they were sort of like all bundled up and mixed up together. When they were split apart, obviously splitting apart means you're going to have a lot more individual components. Someone asked me about the increase in size. You mean the size as in the count of source packages? From what I understood, this is intentional. If I count the glib-based ecosystem that is maintained mostly by GNOME devs, I assume the count should be similar. It's not though. GNOME is much smaller because GNOME's architecture relies on highly independent services provided by applications that integrate with GNOME Shell itself. There are certainly a fair number of libraries, but nowhere near as many as the KDE frameworks offer that Plasma is built on. This post was written over a year ago and was based on the Plasma 5.x era. But that era is about to come to an end. We are getting very close to the release of KDE Plasma 6. So has anything actually changed? Well, someone asked exactly this question. Hi, I know this is an old post, and I know I could probably reach out from Mastodon or another platform, but this post is often referenced elsewhere, and I'm curious if there's any change in the situation or any cause for optimism in the post-Plasma 6 release cadence. 
It's still early days, but tentatively, it has been approved that KD Plasma 6 will switch to semi-annual release cadence after general availability. That meaning, once every six months. The same thing that everybody else does. And presumably, if they want to do it in a way that lines up with the distros, do it at the same time as well. So have a release in March, April-ish time, and a release in September, October-ish time. Here is that post in question. Plasma 6 proposal changed the release schedule by Nate Graham. This was made 11 months ago. Now, the old release cadence wasn't just a problem for the distros, it was also a bit of a problem for the KD Plasma developers. It also often causes the last month or two of some Plasma development cycles to coincide with the holiday season and academy, which isn't ideal because developers' attentions are split. You want to make sure you're not putting too many things going on at once, especially when you have things that, you know, you might want to just not work on KDE, like, you know, the holiday season. If you're not like me, you're probably taking a break right now. Plus, it also allows them to do what they're doing right now, having this long and slow testing cycle. You have these alpha releases and beta releases and release candidates, and you get them tested before they go out to the general public. You can't do this with some, like, haphazard release schedule that it gets released at different times for different components. You need okay, we're going to release at this point and this point, let's set a window, let's set a schedule, and make it so it can easily be done. The KDE team has learned a lot of things since KDE 4, and whilst it has taken them a long time to get here, I'm very happy that we're moving towards this unified release, so hopefully more distros can at least, you know, mess around with it, or the distros that are already doing it have a much easier time actually getting the releases out there. Now, do I think this is going to cause a massive change in what distro is going to ship KDE? Is Ubuntu going to become a KDE distro? Is Fedora going to become a KDE distro? Is RHEL going to bring KDE back? Probably not. But it is going to make it a lot easier that if someone new comes along, wants to make this point release distro, having KDE as your flagship option is going to actually be a viable thing that doesn't need a lot of managing to keep track of like when different components are releasing. There's still going to be the issue of it being very big, but that's an issue that basically can't go away without giving it more of like a GNOME-like architecture. So hopefully you learned something, or maybe you didn't. I don't know. And if Neil, you happen to see this uh, video, feel free to add any additional context in the comment section down below. That would be very appreciated. So, if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... KDE, very soon. The days. The days are coming.